As someone who can't get enough of tool watches, Seiko is a brand that I've grown increasingly fond of over the past few years. Of course, that's hardly surprising given that they've long been known for producing excellent dive watches. One of which is the Captain Willard, a watch that was made famous by the film Apocalypse Now. In 2020, Seiko released an updated version of the watch, and since then they've produced several different models. The version I'm looking at today is the SPB237J1, which was kindly loaned to me by Francis and Gay Jewelers. If you're looking for a reliable authorised dealer in the UK, then get in touch with them and they'll be happy to take care of you. The watch retails for £1,220 or US dollars which is in line with the other Willard interpretations, but it's still a lot more than some of the other dive watches in Seiko's Prospects range. So let's see if we can figure out exactly why Seiko is asking that much for it. As you'd expect, the 237 is an ISO certified dive watch with 200 meters of water resistance, incredibly bright loom, and a unidirectional bezel with an aluminium insert. Somewhat unusually, it doesn't come on a steel bracelet, but it's instead supplied with two NATO straps. On the surface, these features don't do anything to explain the more premium price. Seiko certainly offers plenty of other divers with similar specs for less money. But diving a little deeper, there are a few things that separate the 237 from the cheaper models. For starters, the case is covered with Seiko's Dire Shield coating, which offers improved scratch resistance over bare metal. And instead of Seiko's Hardlex Mineral Crystal, the watch has a more scratch-resistant Sapphire Crystal with an anti-reflective coating. The 237 also uses a 6R35 automatic movement, which is slightly better than Seiko's entry-level 4R35. The 4R35 is rated to be accurate to a mere plus 45 to minus 35 seconds per day, and has a fairly average power reserve of 41 hours. In contrast, the 6R35 is accurate to plus 25 to minus 15 seconds per day, and has an impressive 70-hour power reserve. Whilst the accuracy of the 6R35 could do with improving, it's still a higher spec movement than the 4R35. Whilst these features clearly put the 237 at the higher end of the Prospects range, I don't think they fully explain the watch's cost. After all, there are plenty of other brands with affordable dive watches that have similar features. Which brings me on to the design of the 237. It's naturally very close to that of the original Willard, and that carries with it a certain value. After all, this watch gives you a chance to get an update of a classic Seiko design but built to modern standards. The case is the same classic cushion shape as the original Willard, with the screw down crown at four protected by some prominent crown guards. It's a design that won't be for everyone, but it's what defines the Willard's whole identity. At 42.7mm wide, the 237 is actually a bit smaller than the original Willard, which was 44mm. It also wears very nicely thanks to a decent lug-to-lug -lug of 46.6mm and a reasonable thickness of 13.2mm. Furthermore, the bezel is smaller than the case, measuring just 40.5mm wide. This makes the watch feel smaller on the wrist than the case dimensions would suggest, while still allowing it to have a good presence. Like the case, the dial layout is almost identical to the original Willard, but with a few modern tweaks. The indices have a very slight taper to them, and the loom is a light cream colour to replicate the patina seen on vintage watches. Unfortunately, the date window isn't framed, as there isn't any space thanks to a barely noticeable applied marker at 3. The handset is fairly simple, but they do have a split finish, with one side being brushed and the other polished. This serves to create some interesting light play on the dial, and it helps to take the watch's finishing up to the next level. Of course, the biggest difference on the 237 is that grey dial with its Bart-like texture. It's somewhat reminiscent of the SPB143, and it strikes a nice balance between playful and serious. It's not as plain as the solid black Willard, but it's not a gimmicky colourway either. As I mentioned earlier, the 237 comes with two NATO straps, one green and one grey. These use a traditional Japanese braiding technique known as Sei Chu, which gives them a ribbed texture. The material is rather thick, so the watch does sit quite tall on the wrist, and I would have preferred a single pass option. However, the nylon is comfortable to wear and it feels very durable. 
The steel hardware is also very nice, though you should be aware that the top keeper isn't tall enough for you to tuck the excess material back on itself. Despite this, I do prefer the NATOs to the bracelet offered on the other models, as I find the bracelet can be too chunky. Meanwhile, these NATOs give the watch a strong military vibe, and they can be swapped out easily for another strap whenever you fancy. Ultimately, I think that the main reason the 237 costs so much is Seiko's heritage. The brand has existed since 1881, and its watches have been worn prominently by actors and adventurers alike. As a result, the brand's reputation precedes it, and it's one of the brands us watch enthusiasts recommend most to those new to the hobby. But whilst a lot of us have traditionally thought of Seiko as a bang for your buck brand, it has also started to leverage its classic designs to expand into higher ends of the market. And in all honesty, I think that's a decision that makes sense for them. Seiko built their reputation on tool watches, but those days are over, and now watches are practically just jewellery for a lot of people. On top of that, micro brands have massively changed the watch industry over the last five years. These days, micros are able to offer great quality pieces at exceptionally low prices, and as a result of this, the lower end of the market has become very crowded. By offering these reissues and reinterpretations with better specs at a higher price point, Seiko are switching who they're competing against. Instead of those small micro brands, they're against the entry-level Swiss watches, which is traditionally exactly who Seiko are strongest against. Of course, whether or not you want to pay a bit more to get a watch from a brand of Seiko's pedigree is entirely up to you. Personally, I think that whilst it's not a strong value proposition, £1220 isn't a bad price for this watch considering the design's heritage. And whilst I know that that's a somewhat controversial opinion, I can't help but think that if we were talking about a Swiss brand like Tudor, a lot more people wouldn't have a problem with it. But putting aside the price of the watch, the 237 is a great modern update to the Willard design that incorporates the best features that modern Seiko has to offer. Just like the original Willard, the watch is a capable diver that's got a distinct and unmistakable aesthetic. It's iconic, and I can't help but feel attracted to the 237 because of that. And that's it from 12 and 60. Thanks once again to Francis and Gay for sending me the watch. As I said earlier, I thoroughly recommend them as an authorised dealer. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers!